Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. As we greet you uh, from Rawalpindi in Pakistan, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and with Ramadan Karim. Our subject is Hagia Sophia. Hagia Sophia is a Christian cathedral. A cathedral is different from a church. A cathedral is a grand, grand, grand church. Like a Jamia Masjid. And Hagia Sophia is a Christian cathedral. It was one thousand years old and had already become the foremost cathedral of the Christian world outside of Jerusalem when the Ottoman Empire conquered Constantinople. And I have some comments to make on Hagia Sophia. It will offend some people. It will surprise others. Those, on the other hand, who have an attachment to the Quran and therefore to truth, and who are not arrogant in their thinking, will heed what I'm saying and critically access and analyze what I'm saying. But others who do not have that attachment to the Qur'an and for whom the Qur'an is not absolute truth or who have the arrogance to believe that they can impose their views on the Qur'an, the Qur'an must submit to them. Well, I don't care how much they get angry with me because I don't care two peanuts for them. So let's proceed with our subject on Hagia Sophia. Our Prophet Allah's blessings be upon him gave a timeline of events that will occur in Akhiru Zaman. And you're very familiar with it. Except those who eat their biryani and go home and sleep and they don't care for knowledge. My comments are going to be a bit harsh in this lecture because I'm facing people who don't think. And when Nuh alayhi salam spoke to his people, he began by speaking gently, but they wouldn't listen. And then he changed and his words were like thunder. And so I have spoken gently for so long and have written and my style of writing is simple. But there are those who simply will not, will not think. And so if my words are now like thunder, I'm following in the footsteps of a prophet of Allah. Nabi Muhammad والسلام, is sitting with his companion Mu'az ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu and offering a timeline of events with which you are familiar. So I don't have to spend too much time on it. He said that when Jerusalem is full, is center stage in the world, at that time look to Medina, it's forlorn desolation, playing no role in history. At that time, he said, the next event to occur would be the Great War, the Malhamma, Armageddon. And I am suggesting that that's where we are located now. But you don't have to accept my view. You can believe what you want. This is my view. That today Jerusalem is center stage. Yes. In fact, a prime minister of, the United, of, of Israel set up the United States. We control the United States. And the United States couldn't say, mm. that's the control that Israel has. So Jerusalem is center stage today. And if you look at Medina, you can see Medina is playing absolutely no role in affairs of the world, none. And so I have come to the conclusion that we are now located at that moment in time when the next event to occur would be the Great War. Om Armageddon, 
the Malhama. In fact, I'm surprised it has not occurred as yet. And I believe we got a respite when Donald Trump became the president instead of Hillary Clinton. But you don't have to agree with me. And I believe the reason why they did every single dirty trick in the world to get rid of Trump, and they eventually succeeded, and put their man Biden, is because they could not provoke nuclear war with Russia while Trump was president. They needed someone in the White House they could trust, and they didn't trust him. And so I hope I'm wrong, but I believe that that nuclear war is coming within the next four years. And I've said it time and again, based on my study of eschatology, that as soon as that war begins, I believe, I suspect Pakistan will be attacked in order to denuclearize Pakistan. But you don't have to accept my views. There are so many others who offer their views. You don't have to accept my views. This is my frustration coming out in this talk. My frustration. There are people who refuse to think. And Dr. Iqbal said about this Ummah, he said, this Ummah stopped thinking 500 years ago. Dr. Iqbal, I agree with you. They may differ with you, but I agree with you, Dr. Iqbal. Yes, this is my experience. An Ummah which has stopped thinking. So when the Great War takes place, I anticipate it will be a war between NATO on the one side and Russia and China on the other hand. Because our prophet said that it will be a war in which 99% of all combatants will be killed and therefore it has to be a war using weapons of mass destruction, but you do not have to accept my view. You have all the Maulanas and Muftis you can turn to for their views. We've never had nuclear war in history, never. And if there is a war between Russia and China on the one hand, with the United States and NATO on the other hand, you bet you it is going to be nuclear war. You can close your eyes. And in a nuclear war, definitely you can consider 99% of all combatants being killed. But I have come to the conclusion based upon the Quran that Russia is going to win the war because Allah is going to intervene to help Russia. And if Putin this and Putin Jamaat could get lost. Russia is going to win the war. The Orthodox Christian world is led by Russia today. And that Orthodox Christian world is in the Quran, is room. And Allah has promised room that they will be victorious twice. Let me repeat that for those who have not been studying the Quran. Allah has promised room that they will be victorious twice. Min kabl wa min bad. The first victory has already taken place in the lifetime of the Prophet And he said, Allah Ta'ala said that on that day when Rome is victorious, yes, the same Orthodox Christian world which at the time of the Prophet had the Trinity. The same Orthodox Christian world, which at the time of the Prophet was worshipping Jesus as God. That same Orthodox Christian world, the Prophet celebrated. It's so sad that I have to raise my voice to these people who don't want to think. وَيَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَفْرَهُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ and on that day when Rome is victorious, you will celebrate. And that including our Prophet And that Orthodox Christian world will be victorious a second time. And my view is that it's coming in the Great War. That Orthodox Christian world is also in the Quran when Allah says at that time when the Jews are most hostile to you. I don't care two peanuts if they object to my saying that because that's what Allah says. 
At that time when the Jews are most hostile to you, there would be a Christian people who would be closest in love and affection for you. While they are eating their biryani and going home and sleep, I recognize that we are now living in a world in which the Jews are most hostile to us. And therefore I see before my eyes a Christian people turning closer and closer to us Muslims. And it's not Washington and not London where a man can marry another man and get a marriage certificate. Not that world of Gog and Magog. It is this Orthodox Christian world are coming closer and closer to us. And therefore it is this Christian world with whom we should be looking to make friendship and alliance. And that Christian world, that Orthodox Christian world, Hagia Sophia is in the heart of that Christian world. Hagia Sophia is the most loved house of God for that Christian world after Jerusalem. And so when the Ottoman Empire conquered Jerusalem, conquered Constantinople, in 1452, in violation of Allah's command in the Quran. But those who eat biryani and go home and sleep, they don't care for the Quran. They don't care for the Quran. So my words are like thunder for them now. I don't care two peanuts for them. The truth will prevail. And if I have to shout, I'll shout. The truth will prevail. The Ottoman Empire conquered Constantinople in 1452 in violation of Allah's command in the Quran. If your enemy is, is inclined to peace, you must reciprocate. And they didn't want to fight. No. They were outnumbered. They were just about 9,000 men. And you had 200,000. And they were willing to pay a tribute. But no, the Ottoman Empire turned the Quran, put it away and went and fought. And conquered Constantinople. And you were celebrating that? You got peanuts in your head? And then the Ottomans shamefully, disgracefully, to the eternal disgrace of this Ummah and for people in this Ummah who still have the capacity to think, sinfully took Hagia Sophia. First thing that they did when they conquered Constantinople, unjustly, with an unjust war, with a bogus jihad, took it and converted it to a masjid. And all the sheep and the cattle and the goats and the camel are celebrating that. If mine has to be one solitary voice to condemn it, I want to stand before Allah on judgment day, condemning it. So our prophet said that after the great war, the next event to occur is the conquest of Constantinople. Our prophet said that the next event to occur in the timeline of events after the Great War is the conquest of Constantinople. And if Turkey does not understand that, and if Pakistan, the Islamic Republic of Pakistan does not understand it, it's time for someone to teach you. So listen. There's only one prophesied conquest of Constantinople. So don't come with two. Only one. And it comes after the Great War, not before. So where did you get this rubbish from? From which garbage bin you got this rubbish from? That the conquest of Constantinople prophesied by the Prophet al already occurred in 1452 with the Ottomans. From which garbage bin did you get this rubbish? When will you learn to think? When will you be honest? The conquest of Constantinople, prophesied by Nabi Muhammad is coming and you can't stop it. So now why? Why would a Muslim army conquer Constantinople? seven years perhaps after the Great War. 
And that great war can be next within the next four years. I am offering my view. And when I offer my view, I have to say Allah knows best. But if I'm wrong, you should tell me what is right. Did you hear me? If I am wrong, you should tell me what I'm right. Otherwise, shut up. I have offered my view that we will conquer Constantinople. And our prophet congratulated, he praised that army and he praised that commander. And there'll be many Turkish Muslims, yes, in that army whose hearts have not been corrupted by all the propaganda coming on television now. When we conquer Constantinople, it is my view, on the basis of my study of eschatology, and I have not been swallowing that rubbish <laughs> that the Sultan paid for the cathedral. He bought it. Eh? I, I'm not that stupid to swallow that rubbish. That when we conquer Constantinople, we are doing so in order to return Hagia Sophia to that Orthodox Christian world. Why? Because the return of Hagia Sophia to the Orthodox Christian world is pivotally important. Vitally important, strategically important for bringing the Ummah of Nabi, Nabi Muhammad, at least that part of the Ummah which still has the capacity to think while the rest are eating biryani and going home and sleep. That part of the Ummah of Muhammad which is still faithful to the Quran to bring us closer to them. The Orthodox Christian world which has Hagia Sophia in their hearts. We don't have to bring them closer to us. We have to go closer to them. Because Allah has already said that they will be closest in love and affection to us. At that time when the Jews are most hostile. So we don't have to bring them close to us. It is we who have to draw closer to them. And we're not going to draw closer to them if we're following the Darul Loom which refuses to think. I don't think you should criticize me for saying this, because this is the absolute truth. And we're not going to draw closer to them while we have our leaders and our scholars who refuse to think. And they're celebrating like sheep and cattle Erdogan has taken Hagia Sophia and converted it into a masjid one more time. So I'm doing this video to tell you that on that day when we conquer Constantinople, we will return Hagia Sophia to the Orthodox Christian world and Erdogan will not be able to stop it. The Republic of Turkey will not be able to stop it. And Pakistan and all those in Pakistan who are celebrating like sheep and cattle will not be able to stop it on that day. This is truth. I'm confident of this. On that day, the two ummas will draw closer to each other. There will be friendship and alliance between those who follow Nabi Isa Islam and those who follow Nabi Muhammad in preparation for that moment when Imam al-Mahdi will emerge and the, khil the Khilafah state will be restored in Mecca. And on that day when Nabi Isa -Islam returns, Jesus returns, the hearts of the Orthodox Christian world will already be ready to prepare already be prepared to accept the Qur'an as truth, as the word of the one God. It will be easy for them to accept it at that time. 
it'll be easy for them to accept at that time that Nabi Muhammad is indeed a true prophet of the one God. But they will choose to continue to follow Nabi Isa. This is our prophet. And they'll still be in Islam because those who are eating biryani and going home to sleep refuse to think, refuse to study the Quran as it ought to be studied. And so when Dajjal emerges after the conquest of Constantinople, we'll be ready on that day. We'll be ready for the end of history. The two people who now will have the love and affection for each other that Nabi Muhammad والسلام, and Nabi Isa والسلام, have for each other. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.